Full disclosure, I started planning this project about a year ago, so it is in no way related to current world events. However, world events have been off the charts for quite a while now. My goal here is to build the most cost-effective bunker in my residential backyard and build it in a way that can be repeatable should others wish to do so as well. Some people might think my methods are cheap, others will think it's expensive, but we already know there's some millennials calling their parents to see if they can hobbit hole their first home out from underneath their parents' lawn. It is free real estate. Bunkers can protect against all kinds of things, whether it's solar flares, nuclear fallout, hiding from zombies, apocalypses come in all different flavors. However, it's been a dream of mine ever since I was a little kid to just have an awesome hideout full of technology and accessories where a man can just chill. I'm incredibly excited for this project. Make sure you're subscribed. It is free. Let's get started. There are a lot of different bunker options that I looked at when I was starting this project. My first thought was that I could use a shipping container and bury that in my yard instead. Turns out that's a terrible idea. Shipping containers are designed to be stacked on top of each other, but not have any weight whatsoever on the walls themselves or it'll collapse. And if you're going to add structure, you might as well pick option number two, which is designing and engineer some kind of underground basement of sorts encased in concrete. But that got super expensive super fast. Definitely a valid option though if you want something super custom. I however decided to go with a culvert bunker design made out of 12 foot diameter helically corrugated stormwater drainage pipe. These things are so massive. I picked these massive metal pipes for a few reasons. First of all, they have a service life of 100 years, meaning my grandkids' grandkids will be able to use this bunker. And of course, I'll keep a running tally on how much this whole thing costs me as we build it, just in case someone else wants to try and imitate my process. Also, feel free to take my ideas and give me some of your own suggestions down in the comments. Unloading it off a semi-truck was pretty intense, since each 20-foot section of pipe weighs close to 4,000 pounds. It requires a full-size telehandler, and even then we were maxing out its capabilities. We used two giant machines, but you can probably get away with using just one by lifting up one edge, sliding straps underneath, and setting the two back down, then lifting up from the center of the pipe like you see here. Together, these two pieces of pipe cost me exactly $31,959 here in 2023. I picked the helically corrugated storm pipes because of their ridiculous strength. They might not look it right now, but the shape and ribs of these pipe allow them to be buried up to 100 feet. And since this pipe is used regularly all over the world for stormwater runoff in large cities, the installation and engineering is already super well known, vetted, and documented. Entire freeways are built on top of these pipes that people drive over every day. They also come in widths of up to 15 feet wide, but that required special shipping permits, and the 12 foot diameter versions are more than enough for what I need. I mean, look at this. It'll be close to 5,000 cubic feet of beautiful bunker space when we're done. To get inside the bunker that is underneath the ground in my backyard, we will need a 20 foot tall entry shaft at one end and a 20 foot tall emergency exit shaft at the other, I'm calling my bunker the Ground X Project, since not everyone can afford a ticket to Mars. The whole thing is designed to sleep six people, and everything is currently drawn digitally in SolidWorks. Each metal sheet and each structural member is meticulously laid out beforehand, since this isn't really the type of project I can wing on a whim, and we need to be super efficient with the construction. We have to move really fast to get it in the ground before it starts snowing, and the longer these pipes sit in my yard, the more suspicious my neighbors are gonna get. If you want to design your own bunker, SolidWorks has been a channel sponsor for a while now. They have something called 3D Experience SolidWorks for makers, an incredibly affordable way to design anything you can imagine. Great for fabricating, designing, rendering, even programming CNC machines or 3D printers, both connected to the cloud or locally installed. Great for hobbies, personal projects, or, you know, making a massive backyard bunker. 
This isn't our completely final version just yet. We still need to design an elevator in the entry shaft and probably add some more air vents, but we should be finished by the time we're finished. If you want to use professional design tools on a personal level, I'll leave a 20% discount off the usual $99 a year for the 3D Experience SolidWorks down in the description. Elevate your design game or submerge an entire structure, whichever you prefer, all within your means. However, the 3D experience SOLIDWORKS for Makers is not for professional use. If your side hustle makes more than $2,000 a year, you gotta buy the professional version. I don't make the rules, I just leave the links in the description. The CAD file from SOLIDWORKS is also what we put on the back of our shirts. I will leave a link for that in the description as well. As far as burying the pipe goes, some of these culverts can be placed just a few feet below the ground. However, I've decided to go six feet underground because that's where we start to take advantage of the thermal insulation of the earth. At that depth, any hobbit will tell you that's where things start to get cozy and consistent, maintaining about 60 degrees year round. Which is especially beneficial here in Utah where we have really cold winters. Plus, the more dirt that I can put on top of the pipe, the more structurally sound the pipe will be. To a point, of course. The whole thing is kind of like this empty pop can. The thin-walled aluminum can is a suspiciously similar shape to the large pipe, and me being able to crush it with two fingers isn't very confidence-inducing. But if we dig a hole, support the tube with earth from underneath and dirt on the sides, and then bury the can, the same thin-walled empty soda can can now hold my full body weight in multiple positions with no issues. An empty pop can that's buried can survive extreme loads fully intact. Once my bunker's in the ground, it can survive whole semi-trucks driving over the top, giant bomb blasts, or even a zombie the size of your mom. So if we're gonna be sitting six feet below the surface, and we have a 12-foot diameter pipe, that means we need an 18 foot deep hole. We better get to digging. This might take a while. I just you. Do you hear that? I hear reinforcements. <laughs> Big things are coming. If you want to help support this project, you can always buy a Jerry Rig Everything Knife, 15 bucks, jerryrigknife.com. Incredibly useful during any cataclysm. And if for whatever reason it does not survive the apocalypse, just send me an email. See you next week.